The newest episode for Guild Wars 2 got my attention. I haven't played any version of Guild Wars before, but it has a few things I haven't seen from other MMOs, so I gave it a shot. I boosted to level 80 to experience the new content, and while I really don't know what came in Guild Wars before, I really enjoyed my play experience with it. ArenaNet calls the content additions they give to existing players Living World. They add free content, including weapons, zones, instances, and upgradable armor to each expansion, but that doesn't mean your old gear or the old zones are useless, which is unlike many MMOs. The progress you make stays as progress, so you don't need to grind incessantly to experience the new additions. Each Living World episode introduces new maps, stories, and features to the game for max level players. The game was really easy to get into, as there are a ton of things to keep me occupied and not making videos, so let's get into it before I get sucked back in. Here are three reasons you should be playing Guild Wars 2. Number 1. Episodes as a veteran of a few MMORPGs, my test to see if I want to continue playing one is the questing experience through the first zone. Are the stories, instances, and events engaging? Do I understand who I am and what I'm doing there? Do I even care? If the answer to all these questions is yes, then I'll settle down for a bit to see where the story takes me. Guild Wars 2 meets all of these requirements and immediately feels good, putting you into an actual living world that even without a pre-existing knowledge base is easy to get swept up in. The narrative is set in the Elonian Desert which was apparently the scene of an entire expansion from the original Guild Wars, 250 years ago in game time. To catch up new players, for some time the world of Tyria has been caught between an undead king named Joko, awesome name, right? a rogue god named Balthazar, and an evil elder dragon named Kralkatorik, who turns things and people into these crystalline shadow monsters. Balthazar has been recently destroyed, but the trouble has stayed. The land is so scarred by Kralkatorik, it visibly divides sections of the map and completely changes landscapes, like in this rad zone called the Jai High Bluffs. The rest of the zone is these gorgeous cliffs and waterfalls, but parts of the zone that have been affected by the Dragon brand look like hell, if hell was made of purple crystal. The last release for Living World content added a new mount called the Roller Beetle, which damages enemies you roll over and eventually can even knock down walls to reveal hidden areas. In this release, they added a new mastery skill that allows for more uses of your mount's skill. So for the Roller Beetle, that means faster rolling for longer. In the Path of Fire expansion, the zones are larger than anything in Guild Wars before, and ArenaNet did that because the mounts they created needed a big space to play in. These aren't MMO regular look cool, go faster than walking mounts, although they do look cool and give you a speed boost, they open up the world for exploration in a different way. Each of the six new mounts released within Path of Fire has a unique function and skill masteries, which can be upgraded by doing quests and puzzles specifically designed for each one. The Raptor mount jumps horizontally across large gaps, while the Springer, which is a frickin' big bunny, jumps vertically. Some of the zones have areas that can only be reached by utilizing each mount, and this makes the play experience feel kinda like a platformer, which I love. More than just helping you reach new areas, the mounts actually change the way you approach the world when you're riding one. If you see a mount Mountain, you go, I can probably climb that, where in other MMOs you go, that's just a piece of scenery. Another unique thing to this living world stuff is that it changes some instances based on what you've completed or done in the storyline. I haven't seen that before in other MMOs, so it seems like ArenaNet's all about unique game aspects. Number two, more than just story. Each of the Living World episodes brings new content in the form of story progression for your characters and a bunch of features. Everything from raids and five-player dungeons, which in Guild Wars 2 are called fractals, to new armor sets, legendary weapons, and I'm sure some other systems. And these updates are free for players who own the game. It's called Living World because the world of Guild Wars continually changes in each episode, so there's always something to do or experience that you haven't seen yet. For example, in Episode 4 of Path of Fire, there's a new raid called Mithrite Game Gambit, in which you get to fight a genie. Actually, it's called a Jin, which I guess is just a bad genie. There's a new legendary weapon that I think is called Quiquaddle that covers the ground in a green mist and lets you summon a flying snake, and I want it. Along with episodes, there are also limited time festivals for holidays so you can get into the spirit of the season and balance passes for previous content so everything stays nice and orderly. Number three, it's easy to start. 
As I mentioned, I boosted to level 80 before starting to play. A free level boost is included with the Path of Fire expansion. Most MMOs are so far into themselves that starting from scratch is really hard due to complicated play or indecipherable maps and high gear requirements. Guild Wars has features that are made to ease you into the new world and get you started. Guides show you each point of interest on a map and talk you through why you're going there. The mini-map is easy to understand and the missions list is organized. As a noob, the down mechanic is easily my favorite thing in the game. How many times have you died right before killing the mob you were fighting only to run back from wherever you were teleported to to find the monster with full health and ready to kill you again? Guild Wars has a mechanic that allows you to fight for a short time after getting knocked down and revive yourself if you secure a kill. Fighting for your own survival puts you on the edge of your seat not knowing if you'll make it, and it's really rewarding when you do. The ridiculously helpful player base of Guild Wars also eases your introduction into the game. It's definitely one of the best game communities I've ever been a part of. Shout out to my guild VIP, thank you guys so much for welcoming me and teaching me everything. This game is a wealth of fun. When paired with the fact that it's supposed to be enjoyed with a guild, I can really see why many people have played it from the beginning and why people are still picking it up now. If you'll excuse me, my beetle needs a walk. Or a, a roll. Or whatever.